Hi, this is John, and I like making these videos on occasion, particularly when we get to the end of a module and are moving into another to kind of get us caught up, to let you hear what other people are thinking a little bit, but also to lead you into areas that we're going to be taking on in the next module. So relative to the last module, a couple of things popped out, and one was the political advertisements. And it really wasn't the focus. I was trying instead to get at types of advertising that blossomed in the 50s and 60s. Hard sell. I like Ike. You like Ike. Everybody likes Ike. You get fast, fast, fast relief. That repetition, which we continue to hear with some ads today. But also the idea of deep sell, in which the audience member becomes workforce as Rossa Reeves told us. And it's, it was interesting to me that we were pretty evenly split. It was actually 50-50 on whether or not the political ads that we saw were ethical, those made during the Vietnam War. So we had the Daisy Girl and the Atomic Explosion, in which Barry Goldwater's name was not mentioned. But again, the idea of deep cell, the audience becoming the participant in making the meaning puts the two together. It's almost inevitable, as some of you said. When it came to the Vietnam War ad featured during the same campaign, it was a 50-50 split on whether or not ads that featured graphic newsreel images and voiceover by a young child were ethical or not. So this is something that we might explore in more detail as we move through the semester, but we'll start paying closer attention to ads from now on, looking specifically at them. And we'll begin here. And this is an ad that we looked at at the end of the module. And I just want to point out a couple of things about it. And this will kind of lead to a deeper analysis that we'll be engaged in with the semiotics and the ideology coming up in the next module. But just looking carefully at what there. What's there? And so the first thing we notice, and this is the first image in the ad, is that it's animated. This is an animated ad. And this particular type of animation, which is called rotoscoping, they actually filmed this first and then they digitally animated over it. This particular type here really takes out the detail. So if you notice a t-shirt, it's just a blob of color. Same with the pants, same with the wall in the background. It's just lightly sketched out. Most detail, of course, in the face. And because this is an emotional video, as many of you said, the face is going to be the, one of the strongest keys as to what's important. And what's important is emotion. And what we're going to get is a series of heightened emotions. This all happens very quickly. and with the second shot, we see why the first character is reacting, because somebody has come in, presumably dad, with a new car, the, the Volkswagen Beetle. And the Beetle itself is quite light. Obviously, the center of the image is that car. And what happens next is this really rapid acceleration of time. But it happens against, a, and this is important for an ad that's really attempting to hit the emotions, a musical backdrop. And if you notice, we begin with a solo piano. It's mournful, kind of sad, uh, stately as well. And we soon recognize, if we haven't already, that it's a Beatles song. And it's not just any Beatles song. It's not Get Back. It's not Back in the USSR. It's Let It Be, which has got this sort of I want to say, transcendent quality to it. There's almost religious overtones uh, to the lyrics, if you pay attention. And so watching the young man who you we were introduced with in the first shot age, and of course what happens is really, really rapid. This is our second shot, and we've jumped ahead 10 years. And we understand these as being the same characters, because of the clothes that's being weared, the generally similar facial recognition, similarities between son, aged, dad, aged, car, once again in the center of the frame. 
and important. And we moved to finally shot three and the, the scene has lightened immeasurably, right? And the sun is now alone, so set free from the roost to a certain extent. And very quickly, love begins to blossom. And so again, these heightened moments. And the next is what looks very much like Woodstock. And, and all of the detail begins to fade away because this is an ad that is centered on the car and relationships and the relationships with the car. And it almost begins to look like that Think Small ad that we've spent so much time with. And we get this really kind of a clever shot of the couple at what seems to be a drive-in theater. You can see the lines on the frame and the image in the center of, of what appears to be film stock. And we have these two characters that we met at the music festival together again in the car sharing time and we're going to see that again it's significantly a biracial couple and here we have the pregnancy again an aging of the participants and then again a very rapid acceleration of time where um, the daughter has been born and is growing and is going away, graduating from school, and off goes dad? It's a little bit unclear. Um, but also we get this children's chorus kick in at this point. And it's interesting that it is a children's chorus. It's not a men's chorus or a women's chorus. or um, It doesn't maintain the instrumentation, but it's a kid's chorus. So there's a kind of innocence to this, right? Um, we see that we're in more or less contemporary times with now the, um, the windmills in the background and the, this idea of the last mile begins to take hold on a different level. Our character is aging and not inconsequentially, the car is also uh, leaving, is, is, is going to be no longer made actually, which was the the reason that they made this ad. The Beetle was not going to be manufacturing anymore. And so looking at this man staring off this kind of perplexed maybe or longing look in his eye as he recognizes perhaps, and I know I'm reading into this a bit, but given the music and given the coloring and given the expression, I think that this is going to be anchored a bit. This kind of longing for what was the last mile. And so he recognizes possibly his, his own relationship to those words, the last mile in his life as the car zooms off towards it. So just really interesting ad as memories begin to float through and people begin to uh, enter the frame. We've moved from the Death Valley shot to a parade <laughs> where people are presumably uh, applauding this car as it runs its last lap and we get these images of people holding photographs from um, previous ads. We get um, images from popular culture. For example, Andy Warhol is going to make a brief appearance. That guy, we have an astronaut in the crowd, um, fully dressed, which would have been a reference to the, the 70s. Um, here's Andy Warhol with the camera. But this kind of sense of celebration. We've moved from um, this mournful piano, solo piano, to this kind of building up of emotional catharsis almost, this really heavy emotional moment, while in the background we have this couple who again is aging. And so it's really kind of lovely and it makes you feel maybe kind of good and sad at the same time. And then we get what often happens in ads, goodbye, this magical moment where in the rearview mirror goes our characters and, and something, the car begins to fly away and becomes transformed into a firefly and then ultimately into the Volkswagen logo. And so where one road ends, another begins. And unlike, or, or rather like so many ads 
that deal heavily with emotions, but he really don't know anything about the product other than that there's this emotional bond that can be forged with it. Seemingly, it never says that, but we see it happen, right? And so, um, I'm going to come back to stuff like this later on because I think that we, we have with commercials this blending of music and movement that you don't get with the print ad and which makes them more complicated, commercials more complicated to look at, but maybe more interesting to look at as well. Emotion and music are so strongly linked in our culture. And so that's a good key to what advertisers are looking to, to hit. So I'm going to leave it at that for now. And if you have any questions or comments, shoot me a line. I hope you are all doing well. And uh, we'll see you with semiotics coming over the horizon. Take care.